Inspired by poetry. Let's give it some lift. Oh, it's so great to be back with everyone. How are you, TB? I am doing great. Well, it's wonderful. It's it's always good to get together and chat about poetry. And this week, we have an Australian icon. Yes. Who are we looking at today? So, we are looking at Henry Lawson. Okay. And nice. I'm just, bush poetry is relatively new for me, and I love it. And this just resonates with everything I believe in and the spirit of what it believes in. So... Um, do, you, do you know what exactly it is that resonates with you? I think it's about the view of culture. Mm -hmm. And as we talk about the poem, you're going to see more of that. It's a relationship we have with the bush. Yeah. You know, in our youth versus as we get older yeah. and we need its bosoms, right? So, uh, yeah, it really resonates as a, a part of culture. And in a way, how our, it has a change, we have a change in relationship with we it. We do. And it with us. We do. Yeah. I look forward to chatting about this on the other side when we talk about the, the poem. But yeah. um, Lawson, one of the greats, mm -hmm. um, certainly in Bush poetry, love the rhythm, love how he looked at the Bush and the relationship we had with the Bush and how, how he made sense of those relationships. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's just give a little bit of a background about Henry Lawson himself. Uh, became a legend. Yes. In Australian um, literary circles. Well deserved, and, yeah, I have to say. <laughs> yes. And his poems have resonated, obviously. He was the first Australian writer that was granted a state funeral. Wow. Yeah. And that was in 1922. That was in 1922. Yeah. Yes, very good. He wrote short stories and poems. Um, he uses there's a there's a sympathetic voice. Yeah. And a, sometimes a lot of humor. A yeah. little Cheeky from time to time. But he really depicted Australian men, women, and children, and that Australian rural life. Yeah. In the late 19th century, the early uh, 19th century, early 20th century. Yeah. yeah, and I like that. And the, the book that we're looking at is Poems by Henry Lawson, selected by Walter Stone, but importantly, illustrated by Prohart. And Prohart is one of my favorite artists. Oh. So he brings to life the images of the landscape that is Australia and just the way. The vibrancy. Oh my gosh, mm. it, it, it just brings life to everything. And I think it's part of what makes it so great for me. That's wonderful. And so we are going to be looking at a poem that Henry Lawson wrote in 1920, uh, 1922, the year of his passing. Yeah. And in fact, I think this is one of his very last poems. Yeah. And he died as a relatively young man, like I think mm. about 54, 55, yeah. which for me is very young. Yeah. Um, uh, and I just think that it's that reconciliation. And it is a bit cheeky, mm. and I love that about it. It's a bit cheeky, and I love that. Oh. So, And so this is called On the Night Train. On the Night Train. On the Night Train by yeah. Henry Lawson. Well, if you live in this city and you're unfamiliar with anything I'm about to say, I want you to sit, think about it for a second, reflect on it, and it really is an introduction to bush poetry. All right. So, on the night train, have you seen the bush by moonlight from the train go running by? Hear a patch of glassy water, there's a glimpse of mystic sky. Have you heard the still voice calling, yet so warm and yet so cold? I'm the mother bush that bore you. Come to me when you are old. Did you see the bush below you sweeping darkly to the range, all unchanged and all unchanging, yet so very old and strange? Mm. Did you hear a bush a calling when your heart was young and bold? I'm the mother bush that nursed you. Come to me when you are old. Through the long, vociferous cutting as the night train swiftly sped, did you hear the gray bush calling from the pine ridge overhead? Mm. Have you seen the seas and cities? All seems done and all seems told. I'm the mother bush that loves you. Come to me now you are old. Oh my goodness. What a journey. What a journey. That is a journey of a poem. It oh. is. But, but doesn't it like reflect culture, you know, in that mm. the bush is this beautiful, purposeful place. We leave it for the cities because it bores us. But it's calling you back, and in our old age, we're ready to, to appreciate and embrace it for all that it is. Yeah. So I really love this in the relationship we have with nature, right? Oh. Is that so we want to escape it. And I, I think about just even myself as a young person, if 
I were to live in the bush, I would be bored all the time. I couldn't see it for what it was. Mm. But it's always there, a calling. Come yeah. back when you're ready. That's right, when you're ready. <laughs> I love the sound yeah. that Lawson is able to create with the words that he chooses. Yeah. I believe there was um, one line that used unchanged, unchanging, mm -hmm. and what's the last word? A strange? Yes. Yeah. So it's so, unchanged, all a changing, and yet very old and strange. And strange. Yeah. There you go. So that... that elongated A sound yeah. in all of those, and unchanged, unchanging, I'm just going to get a little liter yeah. literary <laughs> here, it's actually called a polyptotin, where you use kind of a variation of the same word, Yeah. so by have the unchanged, which yeah. is past tense, and then unchanging, Changing. which is in the process of, Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's phenomenal what he does with language, and then of course you have that repetition of that last line of each of the stanzas. Yeah. Uh, just with a little bit of a variation on each of the ideas. I think it's, I bore you, I nursed you, and yeah. then... So if we look back on those lines, it, you know, uh, I'm the mother bush that bore you, come to me when you're old. Yeah. Um, so you'll, you'll, you, you'll see that reference that you're talking about, bore you, mm -hmm. and then old. Um, and that sort of like on the fourth line of every stanza becomes this right. re repetition. But the next one is, I'm the mother earth that yeah. nursed you. Yes. And then the one that loves you. And then loves you. Yes, yeah. that's that. Yeah. Yeah, so that's interesting, that 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 progression that we yeah. see in that repetition. So, I mean, the line itself is that they're parallel lines. Yeah. Just the little variations that are included in there speak volumes. But it does. And it's a relational thing, isn't it? Mm. You were sick of me, mm. but I'm nursing you. Remember yeah. what I'm yeah. here for, and it's because I love you. And it's all about the way that we, we're luring you in. It's a relationship. It's like I, I think of nature as the mother and child relationship, mm. right? Yeah. Is that we don't necessarily appreciate yeah. <laughs> what it is, but it comes from a good place. We don't realize we no. are part of it. No. We are no. nature. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we create these divides yeah. and we leave it. And that, that it's only later in life that we come back and we realize how interconnected and actually mm, symbiotically yeah. related yeah. we are. And, and the night train for me is is the, the journey, right? Mm. It's the journey in the relationships that we have. Well, the title itself, yeah. which is having that yeah. night train, it's a closing. Yeah. You know, the night is the close. And, and, and when we get to the end of the poem, it's a, it's a closing of someone's life as well. So the closing of the day, the yeah. closing of life, knowing that this is one of his last poems, I get chills. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and maybe this is the coming of inner peace, right, as he mm. writes this, and that for all the things that happen in our lives, right, mm. this is where I get my inner peace and I must come to rest That's right. at, at some point in my life. And it, it comes from a very good place. But also the choice of the imagery around you know, that we associate with, you know, the bush and the moonlight, um, the water, the mystic skies, you know, all of that imagery about the essence of what makes it so beautiful, but yet to some may not appreciate it at the time, but later in life you can come back to it and say, wow, yeah, I can appreciate that. Mm -hmm. There's and a that, blindness yeah, that can it happen. Is. It absolutely. Yeah, I mean, with the busyness of this world, with the hecticness of schedules there yeah. there is a blindness that can take place and if you go back like did you see the bush below you sweeping darkly to the range mm -hmm. so did we miss it or did we see it just a reminder did you see did it did you see it yeah and there's there's a um adjective in each of them or an adverb in yeah. each of them as well so like that one was darkly and i think in the first one it used hold on i'm trying to find it here let me look on yeah. your version there. Yeah. <laughs> We're sharing versions. We're sharing here. versions because the book is so beautiful. It I is. wish, I, I really do hope that you are yeah. motivated to go out and get a copy of the book because yeah. the artwork is particularly beautiful. Oh, yeah. um, if you're into Pro Heart, it's, it's a great thing. And I think it's the, and the way they go the together. Way they go together. Mm -hmm. It complements it. Yeah. So this particular piece of art just is, is so great. Mm -hmm. 
the uh, train. The train the and, and I can see the glassy water. But the trees on yeah, the I foreground. Can see the that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I the, can see everything that's being described. So yeah. Pro Hard really captured the essence of what that journey would be. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We're talking about poetry, but we're talking about artists at the same time. Hey. hey. <laughs> well, remember, poetry comes from the word poesis, yeah. which just means to bring into life, and to this, make. This is creative intelligence, right? right? It's all the things we get from creatives. Yeah. So yeah, in that first paragraph uh, stanza, we have mystic sky. Yeah. yeah. And then we have the, um, did you see that in the darkly? Yeah. You know, we sweeping darkly to the range, and then it's swiftly. Yeah. So that's interesting as well when we go from mystic to darkly to swiftly, which, you know, when you get towards the close of life, it yeah. seemed time operates differently yeah. <laughs> after a certain age. And, and I think what's the important context for me when reading this piece and having learned that it was the last piece that he wrote is maybe to some degree it's his coming of age with mm -hmm. a bush, right? The relationship he had with a bush. Mm -hmm. Because it's uh, most of the his other poems are really, really cheeky about life in the bush, right? Yeah. And this one is kind of like more resolved. It's almost a bit of a tension. It is. With the, with it is. In the other poems, but yeah. with this one, you're right. This There's... one, is, it's a coming of age. I yeah. think when you've accepted that the bush has its place. Mm. And for those who leave because they couldn't see themselves there, you know, it's calling you back and yeah. you will always have a home there. And I always feel like poetry is the place where we can ask questions yeah. and we can be curious, we can ponder why something yeah. affects us this, a certain way. Yeah. And especially, uh, you know, if there was knowledge of a looming, yeah transformation or or death or whatever it might be that would definitely cause a re perspective rethinking a rethinking 1922 of think mm -hmm. of what's happening in the world oh gosh yeah definitely 1922 think of what's happening in the world so you can't extract yourself from the yeah. time right I know. There's and, no way. and you could see that in this poem you can't extract it yeah. and where do you find the comfort because certainly you know mm post-war war I would like to be in the bush yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? what, what were we just talking about making sure our phones don't know too much exactly I'm thinking where would I go and I unplug the bush yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I get mean, off the grid exactly so it's like the relationship and the, you know it's mm. calling you back and all these things yeah. that we have in our in our life that are conveniences yeah can also be distractions. They are. Yeah. They are. And and the absence of the urbanization of the poem for me is great. Okay. A train really isn't for me urbanization. It takes you there, mm -hmm. but it's it's been one of the earliest modes of transportation, right? right? Yeah. Industrialization, earliest modes of transportation. So I think that the choice of that and how we access the bush and it's, you know, to some degree, we're talking a train that's very slow, right? Yeah. It's Methodical. a slow methodical mm. you know it, it very rudimentary is the word I, I'm thinking yeah. about in the way we we get on this journey yes a little faster than on foot but yeah. <laughs> maybe not yeah, too much, much. <laughs> um, just chugging along what are, what are those um those scenes in some of the movies where the horses can catch up exactly <laughs> <laughs> like, well if you look at pro hearts that's Drawing. a missing thing you know maybe if, if pro heart had more of a sense of humor he would have gone yeah, that's right. <laughs> the, the carriage of the footman really outpacing the train right. you know so it's it's really good mm. and and the muted colors with the vibrancy of the blues around it mm. just puts me in that yeah Toward the end of my life, this is a relationship I want to have with nature. It's a reflective yeah, picture. Yeah, it really is. With those muted tones. It really is. And yet the vibrancy beneath. It really yeah, is. And I think that, that we can say that with the poem as yeah. well. It's a reflective poem. It is. And, and I think for me, how the, does this inspire me? Mm. Yeah. It's, it inspires me to understand nature, the nature that's around me a little bit more. Mm. And to think about... Not just what bores me, but why it bores me. Yeah, yeah and how it nurses. <laughs> and how it nurses. Mm. And to see the cues about the relationship I have with nature. Well, there's so much. You know, uh, there's studies that, that talked about people who are suffering from depression. Yeah. That getting outside and, and just being with you know, a, a, a different part of yeah. nature that you put yourself in 
and, and immerse yourself in has the potential to change the, the way the endorphins yeah. are working. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying all, but I, I, I've read but I studies about like, how being out, the sun itself, and the, the medical, you know, benefits we have by just, you know, yeah. safely, yeah. but being having yeah. some sun in our life. and it, It's the lesser of the two evils, if I could come to it. Even when it's not safe, it's still the lesser of the two evils, yeah. right? Because right. I, like, my days are spent outside. If I can meet outside, I'm outside. I I'm you. never in I an always office. I see you outside. I mean, if anyone knows me... I, I think of the office as this like prison and I don't want to be there. So as I get older, my relationship with nature is a much better relationship than when I was younger. When I was younger, I would think about all of the conveniences that it didn't offer. Mm. Now I think about the peacefulness of mind and how it helps my mental state by being outside. And just, it gives me that Yes, sometimes you just have to unwind, yeah. right? And there's an aesthetic yeah. beauty yeah. just all around yeah. you. If you just take a moment to look around, like the colors yeah. here in Australia just pop. I know. The blues and the greens, they, they operate differently yeah. here. <laughs> they do. And, and the birds, like I... I've I, lived I, in different places. Yeah, <laughs> so have I. And the thing for me is like, I've never been in a place that... I feel like I'm on a level playing field with nature. Mm -hmm. Like I think that no one thing stands out mm. above anything else. The bird that swoops in and takes the food out of my mouth, <laughs> the kangaroos hopping around, the duck and the ducklings that make us all stop yes. to give way. Let them cross the you street. You know, to cross the street as we observe. <laughs> and we're not even in the bush. I you know? know, so imagine life in the bush. Yeah. It's that there's a more holism with it mm. in that the relationships we have are nurtured relationships based on respect. Yes. And I think that that is a different thing. And I think it's yeah. somewhat a uniquely Australian I quality. Think so too. I think it's a uni yeah. uniquely Australian I thing. I love it. I, I do too. Yeah. I do too. And I wish more people would discover it earlier in their lives. Mm -hmm. I think that this relationship we have with the bush shouldn't be when you get to retirement, you decide you want a tree change. No. I think a tree change is a very restorative thing. Definitely. And that it's good for, so everyone's struggling with mental health issues. Would they do better if they move out of crowded urban areas and into more environments where they can, they can be free, they can meditate by not just doing a meditation, but being in an environment where it just comes yeah. naturally. Monotony is stifling. Yeah, it is. And if you can break that monotony, do something new, change your routine a little bit, add a little bit more outdoor time, it, it, it's yeah. so restorative. It, it's so restorative. I sit outside and I'm, I find humor in the birds that fight with me for my food. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what this is for me, you know, the, the dark skies. I feel like every day, yeah. you know, I don't know what's coming next. Yeah. And, and that's part of the joy. But I don't, I'm not too hyped up about anything. Mm -hmm. There's an inner peace that comes with that. And I think the earlier we can discover that, the better. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I, I don't think... There's anything, I mean, this poem is just highlighting, holding up a mirror yeah. to what you'll experience yeah. if, you, if you allow it. If you allow it. I mean, it, it really is a choice yeah. about how you position yourself yeah. as a part, either as a part of or apart from yeah. nature. And I will stick to the, the three references. The first stanza... I bore you. Mm. Don't have time for me. I'm not exciting enough. Yep. I nursed you. The nurturing nature of whether the relationship, or not. I, whether or not it was there. And I do this because I love you. Yeah. So come to me. Come home to me. Yes. You know? Come home to me. So that's a reconciliation at the end that I love so much. And I think he's done just this fantastic job of really, you know, synthesizing how that relationship has worked, the cycle of that relationship has worked, yeah. and just put it all in nature. The descriptors are about what's around you. The noise, I don't hear the noise, I don't see the distractions, mm -hmm. I see just what it is. Perfect. Yes. I, well, you, we can tell how powerful a poem is by how much discussion. Exactly. <laughs> Related to everything. Yes. Look, but look how relatable it exactly. is, right? Look exactly. at how relatable it is. And what a journey it takes it us on. Thank you yes. so much for bringing this poem to us. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really, I'm trying to find poems that 
really capture. I was gonna say move you like yeah. a train. <laughs> <laughs> but at a pace that a, a walker could outpace that's right. Because right. that's, right. that's where I've come to in my life is that it's okay, it's not a competition. Yes. I can get there and not have to be the first one there. It'll still be there. Right. It'll get still there. be there. But I'm going to sit, relax, and enjoy the journey. Yeah. And I'll have to tell, I have to say to you, the pro heart painting, mm. <laughs> just, it's. It's it's a match for me. It's 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 a match made in heaven, and I I really hope that you can get a copy of the book and actually look at this. I think I yeah. wish people would do that. So inspired by this one. Yeah, this is I how I want to live my life. Yes, moving to the bush. <laughs> yeah. Well, something for all of us to take. Yeah, you know, and that's yeah. that's a wonderful poem. If if there's something that everyone who hears it will be like, ooh, yeah, that looks. That's where I am, and that's yeah. that's what I needed. Yeah, from that. So I hope On the Night Train by Henry Lawson is something that everyone goes out, find one. I, like, this is one of my favorites, and I'm really new to bush poetry, but I get it. I, I really, I, it's, it's, my, it's my vibe at the moment. That's awesome. It's my vibe at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you so much again, and thank you for joining us, everyone. Glad to be here, and again... <laughs> Read more poetry. That's right. That's <laughs> Read right. More poetry. And, and let us know if uh, po you are inspired by poetry yeah. as well. Yeah, and any poems, uh, if you know, if, if if people can just reach out and let us know if yeah. there's a poem that you'd like us to yeah. to, to talk about, that would be great. Yes, and we're indeed. also we're always looking for guests yes, as well. Yes, definitely. So if you're a poet and you'd mm. like to reach out, please do so. We'd like to hear from you because we'd like to feature more poets yes. um, and it doesn't matter where you're in the world you know have technology can travel yeah. happy to do that to, to share these discussions that's right okay because the more more of these discussions we yeah. have the more that we'll live more vibrant lives yeah connect with each other that's right so thanks again uh, welcome back I, my spirits lifted Yay. I'm in a studio now but I'm gonna go outdoors yes. get my fair <laughs> my fair bit of nature I, I think I saw you out there earlier. I'm always there. <laughs> I wonder if people wonder what I do for a living. No, <laughs> so, no you, you do a lot. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much. And we'll see you next time.